What's up, guys? Another. Oh, there's one more. That's it. We got this one and one more. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's, that sucks. Party's <laughs> almost over. I, I love Tuesdays, man. So another five contracts tonight, right? I think four of them were no-brainers. Rosas was the question mark. So let's talk about the no-brainers first. Uh, any of those guys in your mind particularly that most impressed you or stood out or anybody you're most excited about the four outside of Rosas? Yeah, I would have to say uh, that's a tough one. Everybody looked pretty good tonight, but if I had to pick one, um, I'd probably pick Bruno if I had to pick one that really, I mean, I set it up there, 29 years old, he's 9-0, six knockouts, three submissions, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he looked nasty. Uh, He'll be a fun addition to, to, that, to that weight class. I did want to ask you Austin Lane as well. I mean, does it show you something, I guess, when somebody loses? I mean, there's a lot of guys, that might be the end of it, right? They're like, oh, my dream was there, but he battled his way back. Does that show you some character? Yeah, no, I think that if it's your dream, you, you don't just quit there. You... you, 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 you Go back to the drawing board if you're young enough and, and, and figure out what's next, you know? Those are the guys that are, that are real fighters. You know, sometimes it takes something like the ultimate fighter, the contender, or something else in your life to find out whether this is or isn't for you. Narula was the first fighter from Tajikistan to make it to the UFC. And I'm just curious, is that wild to you that at this point there's still countries that haven't been represented in the UFC? And, I mean, when you hear things like that? It's crazy. I don't know if you saw, but we were posting, you know, on, on my Instagram and social, we post the warm-ups and who's coming up next or whatever. And, you know, there's like 30 comments on most of His has 1,500 comments already. So, yeah, this, this guy is uh, one of those people that we talk about that literally has a, has a country behind them. All right, now let's talk about Raul Rosas, right? The 17-year-old, clearly, I mean, unbelievable skills in there tonight. Didn't get right. the finish, but only because his opponent was incredibly tough. 100%. This is, this is one of those fights. This fight was awesome for both of these guys. This was good for both of them. You got a guy who's now 6-0, and uh, Mondo was 7-1 and at the time. And, and what a war, what a technical fight it was. Um, both guys pushed themselves as hard as they could. And for a 17-year-old to conduct himself the way he did in this fight, um, I was blown away by it. Blown so, away. You know the obvious questions, right? Like, I mean, he's so young. Clearly, he's skilled, but when you bring him into the UFC, like, are you worried at how you matchmake him off the top? Because we just... Not off what I just saw. Not off what I just saw. What I, after, after what I just saw, this, this kid's ready for, uh, you know, he's, he's ready to, to fight in the UFC. You have to be careful and like not let him sit down at the casinos and the, and the at the slot machines and. The yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be. He's, uh, probably shouldn't fight him in Vegas for a while. He'd be bored as hell here. <laughs> have to sit in his room the whole time. But uh, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I'm I'm very very impressed with this kid. He's he's absolutely special. The amount of fighters that were blowing me up, you know, going oh my god, this kid's for real. This kid's legit. You know, impressive. Do you take an active role in how his career goes from here? Because, again, other organizations kind of have the luxury of being able to slowly walk somebody along a little bit. You can't really do that in the UFC, I don't think. So, do Yeah, this, this, this definitely isn't that place. But when you find, you know, look at Mickey Gall. Mickey Gall came in. Mickey Gall wasn't 17, but Mickey Gall came in here at 1-0. You know, I brought Mickey Gall in off, uh, off looking for a fight to, to fight CM Punk. And, and he had a pretty good career here, you know. He, he, he hung out here for a while and had some good fights uh, and, and did pretty well. You know, if, if you find these kids that you think are talented and you end up being right, they'll last here, you know. And, and what I saw from this kid tonight, he looks special. Like you said, just one more week of this. Um, what do you think the future is like next year? Do you think you can do more of these? I mean, what, is, is 10 weeks enough? What, what do you think the plan is for the Contender Series next year? Yeah, no, t 10 weeks is perfect, you know, uh, especially for us to be able to pull off this season coming out of the, uh, the pandemic, um, pretty impressive. So hopefully next year will be better. Just want to ask you a few outside of this week. Uh, we just heard about Cody Garbrandt, that fight not happening. Just curious if you had any update on, on him and kind of his status. Obviously, a lot of people were sad to see him not competing. Um, yeah, uh, off the top of my head, no, I don't know exactly what his status is, but yeah, it sucks. You know, but it's, it's part of the, it's, you know what's crazy? It seems like it's not happening as much as it used to. Back in the day, 
you know, we used to have so many injuries and all these crazy things going on. I think that the training has gotten smarter. I'm sure the PI is a, is a big part of that too. And um, you know, it doesn't happen as much as it does as it used to. But, you know, uh, Cody's not, 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 not a young buck anymore either. So that doesn't help. Commission meeting, uh, there were six events for the Apex approved for Q4 for the rest of this year. Just curious, kind of what you, where the role of the Apex next year, right? I mean, the world's starting to open up a little bit, starting to travel a little bit more. Are there as many events next year at the Apex, or is the idea to get away a little bit? Like, where do you see the Apex fitting in next year? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know. We'll have to see where, you know, where the world takes us next. Uh, I, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, it's looking good, and, and there would be less fights here, yeah, for sure. But, we'll, we'll, this, you know, there's a lot of other things that are being booked here. Last thing I want to ask you about was just uh, Jose Aldo walking away. Obviously, been around this company for a long time, WC, UFC. I mean, a true legend of the sport. I'm just curious kind of what you think about him walking away and, and just what he means to this company. In the yeah, sport. we love him, man. This will always be his house, I told him. If you ever need anything here, or you ever want to go to an event, this is always your house. And this is a guy that, you know, from the WEC to the UFC, helped help build the sport, this brand, and, um, and Brazil for us. So we love him and we always will. He's made a great life for himself down there, too, and done some great things and made a lot of money. And I, I couldn't be happier for him and his family. Dana, last week you were saying how much of this is mental to fight in this sort of environment. So how crazy is it to see a 17-year-old not come in and look that good physically, but to have no fear, just relentlessly pushing the pressure? No, you're absolutely right. That's one of the things that impressed me the most. Um, and, and I loved how active he was. You know, he's not one of these guys that's a jiu-jitsu guy that just lays around and whatever. He's always going for something. How slick he is, how he takes the back. Um, when you get his back, how he can get out. It just everything that kid did tonight impressed me. And um, especially his cardio. There was never an adrenaline dump where he looked exhausted at one point. And it, there was never a lull in the fight yeah. with either guy. I know we seem to be saying this more and more often about how we're watching the sport evolve in our eyes, but when you see someone who's 17 and he does a flying knee to a takedown transition and he does, does the leg stretch in the first round, are we seeing like this sport has so much further to grow and we're just starting to scratch the surface? You are absolutely right. You're, you're absolutely right. And yes, yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I was talking to you guys last week or whenever it was, you know, we're, we're building this PI in Mexico, we're going to build the PI in Africa. We're talking about one in Abu Dhabi, and as this stuff starts to happen, and I'm telling you, over the next five years, you're going to see some, some crazy athletes uh, in this sport. You've mentioned what this show does for people in the past, like Sean O'Malley and guys like that have come off with sort of big attention. But this season in particular, I feel like 17 years old, Bo Nickel, you've got some guys who are coming in the UFC who've almost already got storylines that are going to have fans talking about them. Joe Pfeiffer as well. Like, Have you seen the metrics for guys like that? And this, how this is the first season that when we put on fights now, these fights start trending worldwide, like, they, like our pay-per-views do or our big fights. So it's never happened until this season where like tonight uh, during that fight we, we were trending number four we got up to number four tonight worldwide I mean this this just started this season so this is going to become one of your biggest vehicles for like new stars right off the bat they can enter the UFC you know for their first fight and have more attention on them than some of the veterans at this point 100% and uh, this this will eventually it should be and then eventually this should be on ESPN and it will be on ESPN the network Last one from me. Joe Pfeiffer spoke very highly of you and said that you'd got him a house and you'd given him some money outside the Contender Series. I'm curious why you did that and what exactly is it about Joe Pfeiffer that you like so much and wanted to help out? Um, I do a lot of things for a lot of people that I don't necessarily talk about. Uh, Joe Pfeiffer, when I, walked, when I left the press conference that night, he told me that he was, he was about to be homeless. So... That ain't gonna happen. Hey Dana. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about a couple of storylines from last weekend's card. Um, Aspen Ladd missed weight again. I just wanted wanted to know your your plans for her. Um, is she gonna kind of be banned at bantamweight or at, at bantamweight and then kind of forced to go to featherweight? Like, what do you do with her? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, 
I do know, but we should probably talk about that at the appropriate time. But yeah. Thank you. Um, Gregory Rodriguez, brutal cut. Um, is that one of the nastiest cuts you, you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I had a doctor today. If you look at that cut, if you go, um, that, that was on my story. Um, you can see an artery in there, like right in the middle of the cut. And what an incredible job Dr. Shu does at, sign, at, at sewing these guys up, man. And you know, however long ago, I mean, how long has he been with us? 13 years, 14 years or something crazy like that? That's why we brought that guy in, you know, early on. You know, these guys get cut with elbows. And if you don't get them stitched up the right way, the scar tissue and, the, and just the, 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 the cut itself, if it's not done the right way, they'll rip open for the rest of their career. This guy sews these kids up so they look good. They don't even look like they've had cuts. Some of the girls that have been cut and as far as prolonging their careers, Dr. Shu has done a phenomenal job with these, with these kids. It's, it's awesome, man. Uh, going back but yeah, it's one of the most disgusting. I mean, I, I, that's even worse than Marvin Eastman, which Marvin Eastman's probably number one or two all-time grossest cuts. Absolutely. Going back to Jose Aldo, do you have a favorite moment with, with Jose or, or, or a favorite fight that you have? Those are always hard for me, but yes, I actually do with him. I think that time, when he, I, th I think the fight was in Rio when he jumped out of the octagon and jumped in the crowd and the crowd was carrying him around and the place was going nuts. It's one of my, one of my favorite Jose Aldo moments. Security team didn't like it. Huh? Security team didn't Yeah, yeah, security doesn't love it, but I do. <laughs> And then finally for me, um, with the 30th anniversary of the UFC coming up next, next year, yep. is that something that you guys plan for already or, or is it kind of just, or do you wait for it also? Yeah, no, we're, yeah, we, we've been planning uh, and, and working on this for uh, probably six months now. Is it the same thing with, with UFC 300 or is that a little bit too far? That's too far. <laughs> Definitely not thinking about that yet. Thank you. Yep. Dana, I know you try to stray, stay away from the background check on the, on the fighters, but did you hear something once, once uh, the Rosas thing was announced that, uh, yeah. from other fighters where he trains here in, in Las Vegas? Well, we talked about it long before the fight was made, and uh, they wanted my opinion on bringing a 17-year-old into the, into the UFC. But did you talk to any of his coaches? He, he trains some, sometimes at Extreme Couture, so with some of the UFC fighters. Did you hear anything from the, the fighters that have trained? No. Like random more Not till tonight. Hey, Dana. Hey. Uh, with the Austin Lane fight, first round, where does that rank in the most brutal low blows you've ever seen? Ooh, yeah, no, that's, that's right up there. <laughs> that was a nasty low blow, yes. That was one of the worst. Apparently, you could be seen laughing on the broadcast. Can you just confirm if kicks to the dick are funny? That I was laughing? Yeah. Oh, I promise you I wasn't laughing during that. If I was laughing, it was because of something else. Um, no man laughs when he sees that happen. That I guarantee you. That was a bad one. He should have took the full five minutes. With Raul Rosas, did you have to get special approval from the commission or anything? Because I think uh, only a few states allow 17-year-olds to fight. We did. Did you speak to his parents or anything, or how? <laughs> I didn't know. Um, I'm, I'm sure somebody in the commission probably did, and I'm sure they had to sign waivers for him to compete. You've told us a few times over the, this season that uh, you might get softening with age. Was there a part of you that was just thinking, you know, please don't get hurt, or were you just like, fuck it, just bleed? <laughs> On, on what? With, with Raul Rosas, were you protective of him at all? Because he's so young and he's the youngest by quite a few years. Were you hoping that he wasn't going to get hurt? Or? No, I, I, yeah, I mean, we hope they all don't get hurt. I mean, we don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, the question is, you know, bef before they come in here, do you believe that they're at the level that they can compete here at the Contender Series? You know, it's not like we brought this kid right into the UFC. We brought him into the Contender Series. He fought a guy whose record was close to his. The only difference between the two was age. And you saw during the fight that they were very well matched. I mean, that, that was as good a matchmaking as you will ever see. I mean, th that, that fight reminded me at some points of uh, BJ Penn and Joe Daddy Stevenson when they fought. High level, 
badass jujitsu, you know, and, and, and both guys, you know, going back and forth. I mean, he was even caught in a deep, nasty guillotine that he didn't choke to and didn't go to sleep to. It was, that, was, that was some high-level shit. You mentioned the age, because him just winning is impressive enough, but at 17, can you put it into context for us? What were you doing at 17? Yeah, I mean, ju just the amount of hard work and dedication that that kid has put into this sport already at 17 years old. Um, there's a lot of people, maybe they screwed around with jiu-jitsu or did some boxing or Muay Thai, but to be able to come to the Contender Series and, and to put it into perspective, I mean, you're talking about every Tuesday night, the absolute best fighters in the world that are not signed by the UFC face off here at the Apex. And he was one of them at 17 years old. So, you know, the amount of hard work and dedication that that kid has put in already is mind boggling. And what's even crazier is, Every week I'm telling you guys, wow, I'm signing this kid and he's 22. Or I'm signing this kid and he's 23. I'm not looking at people till they're 25 or 26 and have great records. So um, to not even hesitate to sign a kid at 17, he's special. He's very, very special. Nice. And uh, Deontay Wilder was back at the Apex tonight. Have you had many conversations with him recently? Who was? The, yeah. the American heavyweight boxer, Deontay. Oh, Deontay? No, I didn't even see him until I was, I was leaving. I didn't know he was back already. Um, he was in time for uh, Rosas. He was there for the fourth and fifth fights. Yeah. yeah, no, I didn't talk to him. Okay, thanks. And uh, are you going to watch his October 15th fight against Hellenius? Probably, yeah. I watch pretty much everything that's out there. I watched the Canelo fight this weekend. I'll, I'll watch Deontay's fight and I'll watch Fury's fight. Yep, I watch all the fights. Thanks, Dana. Yep. Just Dana, with the international uh, PIs, and thanks again for another great night, with uh, Mexico, and I would, will that mean that Contender Series might be like an international thing, or will the Contender Series always be like an Apex Vegas thing? Yeah, no, the, 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 the Contender Series, we, we'd pull people from all of, I mean, tonight you saw kids from Brazil and all over the world. We'll continue to find the best unsigned talent and, and do it on just one Contender Series. Because the whole world can watch it on Tuesday nights uh, from here. Agreed. And lastly, with the hosting Deontay and having things like this, will we see more, not necessarily crossover, but welcoming people to the Apex and helping kind of like crossover promote and stuff? No, everybody's welcome to the Apex. I mean, if people call and ask to come and watch, everybody's welcome anyway. Um, it's not something that we're trying to do or whatever. Whoever wants to come and watch is welcome. And last for me, it's still a rumor, but how excited are you that we could potentially get in Vegas that Crawford Spence Jr. that's been taking like three years to happen? What's the question? With these big boxing fights finally taking, taking forever, but finally happen, any, uh, are you excited with the uh, Spence Errol Crawford? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, that, that's a fight that should be made. It's a fight that needs to happen, and, and boxing never does that. Never does that. Um, so it's good to see it happening, and, and hopefully it, it's good for the sport. I, ho I hope they, uh, they do a great gate and sell a lot of pay-per-views for it, because uh, th that would show these guys, if you put on the right fights, the fights that are supposed to happen, then um, you, they can all make some money. Playing off that, so a report just came out from Dan Raphael that Canelo Triple G did 575,000 pay-per-view buys. That would seem a little low compared to their first two. Do you think that's just because they did it too late, or do you yeah. think that's because boxing? 100%. The fight, the, fight, the fight was too late. That, that fight should have been done four years ago. One follow-up. Yeah, go ahead. No, he's the, the Raul is signed. He's calling for a fight as soon as, as possible. He will be 18 in October. Is there any chances that he's getting a fight before the end of the year or something like that? He just fought. I have no idea. I have no idea when, when we'll fight him again. But um, yeah, we'll see. Um, it was just announced that uh, that Canada, the the uh, Canadian government, is ending the COVID-19 protocol at the end of this month? Yeah, I heard yesterday that the pandemic's over. So are you going back to Canada? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, you know, Canada's one of our massive markets. We haven't been there in a long time, and I'm, I'm excited to get back up there. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Are you guys done with me? Yeah? All right. Have a good night.